So this is the second part of worksheet 12.3, which is a bunch of free response questions. So this is a bigger assignment, um, about 15 minutes each on these problems. Now these are no calculator. Um, now I think I messed up the order, by the way, too. Let's see. Oh, no. Yeah, this is the one we should be on. No calculator on this problem. There's no calculator on the last one either. Um, okay, water is pumped into an underground tank at a constant rate. Water leaks out at this rate, gallons per minute, 0 to 120, times 0, the tank has 30 gallons. When you're reading this, you should be like, wow, this is, this is a rate model. We got incoming rate, outgoing rate. This is your initial amount. A0 equals 30, initial condition. You have endpoints. And so, I mean, I might just write the rate model right now, which we're probably not going to use right away or even for a couple parts. But the rate model is the current, the amount now is the amount uh, known before, which is at time zero, plus the accumulation from that time to the current time of what has come in to the tank, which is the eight gallons per minute, which is constant, it's just a number, but you still got to integrate it, minus the water that's leaking out, which is square root of T plus one DT. So this is your rate model. <clears throat> this is the basic idea that kind of ties this whole problem together. Now you probably only can do parts of it or other questions as we go. Uh, part A says, how many gallons leaked out only from zero to three? So that's going to be the integral of zero to three, uh, the square root of T plus one DT. That's your setup. You want to make sure you write that down. Um, we don't have a calculator, so we get to work this out by hand. This is the same thing as if it helps T plus one to the one half. This is a power rule. There's an inner function, but the derivative of the inner function is one. So we don't need to do anything extra. So the antiderivative is t plus 1 to the 3 halves divided by the new exponent, 0 to 3. And so then if we plug 3 into this, it's going to be 2 thirds, 4 to the 3 halves, minus 2 thirds, 1 to the 3 halves, uh, which is just 1. This is going to be 2, uh, square root of 4 is 2, cubed is 8. So this is going to be 16 thirds minus 2 thirds equals 14 thirds. Let's put the units, gallons of water, and maybe it might be good to put it in the context problem. 14 thirds gallons of water leaked out of the tank from time t equals zero to t equals three minutes. I mean, that's just a really nice thorough answer with units and context. Okay, part B, how many gallons of water are in the tank at time three? So we're looking for A3. So this is where we use our rate model. Um, zero to three of eight dt minus zero to three of square root of t plus 1 dt. You need to write that down. That's the setup. Um, and then we're going to find the answer. So uh, the antiderivative of 8 is 8t. Eight and the antiderivative of this we just wrote, so we could just use that again. It's 2 thirds t plus 1 to the 3 halves from 0 to 3. So that's going to be 30 plus uh, 24 minus 0 minus, now you can subtract everything from this, uh, it's going to be 2 thirds, 4 to the 3 halves minus, well, actually, I think we just calculated that value, didn't we? I mean, we could just write that this is 14 thirds, so, um, but, or we could show the work again, um, either, either way. Uh, two thirds of one to the three halves. And so that's going to be 30 plus 24 minus uh, 
16 thirds plus two thirds. You got to distribute this the subtraction. So that's going to be uh, 54 minus 14 thirds, which I mean it. It's up to you how you want to write this. We could give this least common denominator. This would be 150, 162 thirds minus 14 thirds, 158, 148 thirds gallons of water in the tank at time t equals three minutes. So that's a nice answer. Okay, uh, C, write an expression for AT, the total number of gallons of water in the tank of time. Oh, now this is rare. We already wrote that. So we're just gonna write it again. Okay, that was easy. We had already written that down and used it. And that's fine. Uh, yeah, okay. D, at what time is the amount of water to take a maximum? Just about your answer. Okay, so we're looking for max amount. And we have endpoints, right? And so we need, we're going to do EVT extreme value theorem. Um, me writing this here is not going to give me credit. This is just my own little notes myself. I'm going to write a really nice thorough answer with justification later. But I do want to write critical points. Like I'm trying to find critical points, not abbreviate it. How do you find it? You find the derivative of the amount, which is going to be the derivative of these. It's going to be eight, right? Because the derivative undoes the uh, integral. You plug. <clears throat> The limit's in, well, t plugged in eight is just eight still. It's a constant rate in minus the square root of t plus one, and we're gonna say equal to zero undefined. This is all stuff you should write. You should write a prime, a minus the square root of t plus uh, equals zero undefined, critical points. So we just gotta find this answer now. We don't have a calculator, but this isn't too bad. So t plus one equals 64, t equals 63. So that's your critical point. We have our endpoints. So now we're gonna make a table time, plug them into our rate model, a t equals 30 plus zero to t, eight dt minus zero to t, square root of t plus one dt. Now uh, it's zero, 63, and 120. So you plug zero and you get 30. So that one's easy. 63, uh, so we're gonna have to kind of do the work we were doing before. So this is a little annoying. Um, answer derivative of eight is eight T, zero to 63, uh, minus, I'm gonna just write the antiderivative we figured out earlier, two thirds T plus one to the three halves, uh, zero to 63. Um, maybe I'll give myself a little more room to show my work. So this is 30 plus eight times 63. Um, eight times 60 is 480. So that'd be what, 504. And then you plug zero in and get zero. Um, and then minus uh, 63 plus one is 64. Square root of 64 is eight. Eight cubed is mm, I don't know, eight times 64. 32, carry the 3 to 48 is 51. So that's going to be um, 512. And uh, if you plug 0 in, be careful. A lot of times we plug 0 in and we get 0. But here, if you plug 0 in, you're getting 1 to the 3 halves, right? And then you got to make sure you um, distribute that. So it's plus, uh, does three go into 512? Five plus one is six plus two is eight. Three does not go into 512. So this is a little annoying. I'm gonna give myself a little more room. So this is gonna be 
534 minus, so this is 1024 plus two, so 1022 thirds. And um, I guess we could give this a least common denominator. This is a little annoying. Let's see, 12, carry the one to nine is 10, carry the one to 15 is 16. So we have 1602 minus 1022 is 0, 8, 5. So 580 thirds. So we got that, we got that. Now we still got to do 120. So that's going to be 30 plus, and you plug in the antiderivative here. I'm just going to use that again, 8 times 120. Um, and even up here, we could actually show the antiderivative so that we're not rewriting them every time. Like you could do this, right? And just put zero to t. So now uh, 120, 800, 960 minus, uh, if you plug 120 into this, you get 121. Square root of 121 is 11. 11 cubed? Oh my gosh. 1 times 0, 1, 2. I know this is annoying, but it's doable, right? So it's going to be that, uh, 2 thirds times that. Um, minus, if you plug 0 in, you get uh, 2 thirds. Uh, one to the three halves again. So uh, times two of this is two, six, six, two, minus two. So this is going to be 990 minus uh, two, uh, 2662 minus two is 2660. And then I guess we could do least common denominator again. I'm just trying to, you could write these as like mixed numbers. Maybe that would be easier. I'm just going with what I'm doing right here. 0, 27, carry the 2, 27 is 29. So you get 2970 minus 2662, um, 8, 0, 3. Now all this work is not going to be graded over here on the side. Um, and I don't necessarily need to have that work. I need to show what I eventually get. So make sure it's all very nicely you know, organized. So it's 308 thirds. So which one is the max? Right there. So um, I'm going to write this as a nice final answer. The maximum amount of water in the tank is 5830 gallons at time t equals 63 minutes. Say what the max is, where it happens, use units by extreme value theorem, checking endpoints and critical points. Now make sure you actually show your work for checking endpoints or critical points. So this is a nice thorough answer, nice thorough justification. Okay, so this is a nice straight model, kind of some, you know, not too surprising stuff. Um, the next problem is a when you look at it, you said, okay, so they give you a curve, which is not written as y in terms of x, but that's okay. That's the equation of some curve. They want you to show that this is what the derivative is. Okay, well, that means take the derivative of this and you should get this answer. They could have just said find dy dx, but they're saying show that it's this, which means find dy dx and it should be this. Now, Taking the derivative of this, it's been a while since we've done this, you're going to have to use implicit differentiation. Unless you think you're going to get this y in terms of x by itself, which I don't think is going to happen. Also, look at the answer you have. They have y's in the derivative, which is going to happen when you do implicit. So 
Um, let's do implicit. So implicit means uh, we have, you know, we have an isolated y. So there's, there's a product rule here. So it's x times the derivative of y squared, which would be 2y to the first times the derivative inside. It's like implicit is kind of like chain rule. You know y is a function of x. So you take the outer derivative, the squared, and then you got to still take the derivative of what's inside, which we don't see right now, but it is something in terms of x. So we just write dy dx plus y squared times derivative of x. So this is all the chain rule for that first term. Minus, now we're going to have another product rule here. So I'm going to put parentheses around it because you guys subtract the whole result and we're going to get multiple terms. So it's going to be x cubed times dy dx plus y times 3x squared equals, what's the derivative of 6? 0. So then we got to distribute this. So we have 2xy dy dx plus y squared minus x cubed dy dx minus 3x squared y equals 0. Now this is what we want. We want dy dx, so we need to get that by itself. So the rest of this is algebra with some messy terms. So what we do is we group the dy dx terms together and factor out the dy dx. And then we move the other terms to the other side with addition and subtraction. And then we divide both sides by that. 3x squared y minus y squared over 2xy minus x cubed. And does that match their answer? It does. So you get a point for doing the implicit differentiation correct, and you get a point for finally solving for dy dx. But kind of, you know, as far as free response questions go, this is just taking the derivative. You know, it's a tough one. B, find all the points on the curve whose x coordinate is one. So we want to know points where x equals one and write an equation for the tangent line at each of those points. So then we got to find the tangent line for each of those points. So if we want to figure out the points where x equals one, um, and then we want to write tangent line, well, we're going to need a couple things. To write the equation of tangent line, you need a xy pair, and you need a slope. Now our slope is written in terms of x's and y, so we can't just plug one into that we also need the y value at these points. And they say find the points. They've given you half the point, but points means x, y, ordered pairs. So what you need to realize is that this original equation that they gave you is the way you're going to find the y values when x equals 1. You're going to plug 1 in. So generally, back in algebra 1, if I gave you the x, you could plug an equation and find the y. If I give you the y, you could plug it in and find the, you could find x. So we get uh, y squared minus y minus 6 equals 0. y minus, so we got to factor this, minus 3 plus 2. Got to multiply together to get negative 6. Add together to get negative 1. Double check your work. y equals 3. y equals negative 2. And so the points where this happens is at 1 comma 3 and 1 comma negative 2. That's the points where x equals 1 on the curve. Now we're going to use these to help us find the tangent line. So at the point 1, 3, we got to find dy dx. So we're going to find dy dx at 1, 3. So we're going to plug them into that equation they gave us. So even if we didn't do part A, we could still do part B and just use the answer they gave us. 3 times 1 squared times 3 minus 3 squared over 2 times 1 times 3 minus 1 cubed. So that's going to be 9 minus 9 is 0 over 6 minus 1 is 5 equals 0. So that's your slope uh, for the first line. And so the equation of that tangent line is going to be y minus 3 equals 0 times x minus 1. And you could write that. That could be the equation of a tangent line. You could also write it as y equals 3. So apparently it has a zero slope. It's a horizontal line, horizontal tangent line. 
So for the other point, one negative two, we're gonna plug that into our dy dx, one negative two, and very carefully, three times one squared, parentheses, negative two, minus negative two squared over two times parentheses one, parentheses negative two, minus negative two cubed. I'm always really careful when I substitute values in it. I just put them in parentheses to make sure I don't mess up, you know, negative and stuff. So this is gonna be negative six minus four, which is gonna give you negative 10. The bottom's gonna be negative four plus eight. So it's gonna be negative five halves is your slope. So we're gonna do y, um, <clears throat> I made a mistake somewhere. Let's see, negative four. Oh gosh, dang it. This is supposed to be X. So that's supposed to be minus one. So that's supposed to be five, which is gonna give you negative two. Well, just gotta do your best. Hopefully you still get the next point. Even if you get the wrong answer, you just lose a point there. But don't, you know, don't bail. If you're like, oh, that's ugly. I'm not, I'm, it must be wrong. So I'm just not going to finish the problem. No, use that and finish the problem. So it's going to be y plus 2 equals negative 2 x minus 1. Now we just leave it like that. Don't change the slope intercept form. That's good enough unless you need to for some other reason. Okay, part C says find the x coordinate. Uh, each point on the curve where the tangent line is vertical. So tangent line vertical. So tangent line vertical is when the derivative is undefined. And, and in fact, it's when it's when there's division by zero. So if we if we take the derivative then that means, you know, we want division by zero. So that means that two x y minus x cubed has to equal zero for this to happen. So okay, well let's let's solve for that. Um, we could let's see. Um, I mean, we could factor the x out or one x out. and you get one value of where it's undefined but there's this other possible place you know and we could solve we could do y equals uh x squared over two so i mean here like that's an x value for where it's going to be undefined but there's this other place where this where this happens so we first of all we need to find the y value that goes with this so we're going to do the same trick that we did on the last problem where we're gonna use the original equation and we're gonna plug a known x value in and find the y value that goes with it. And what we get is zero equals six, which is not possible, which means that this isn't an actual point on the curve. It doesn't exist. There's not an x, y pair, but we're gonna use the same trick here and plug this in for the y's because we want to we essentially what we have now is we have a system of equations we have the original equation and then we have this new relationship that must be true for the derivative to be undefined and so together we got to solve the system of equations so i'm going to use substitution so this is this is a little heavy on the algebra you know this is all just crazy algebra stuff you know Okay, x to the fifth over four, make sure you square the two, minus x to the fifth over two. And then we could combine these together and that would be negative x to the fifth over four equals six. So then that'd be x to the fifth equals negative 24. And then we take the fifth root of both sides, no plus or minus, it's odd. And we can do the fifth root of a negative um you know that's that's good enough so this is the x coordinate um and they just said just find the x coordinate okay so we don't need to go back and find the y coordinate they said just find the x coordinate um so that there you go that was the main calculus stuff was right at the beginning 
that knowing that a undefined derivative or vertical tangents where the derivative is undefined causeway division by zero. After that, it was just it was a lot of algebra. So, okay, let's take a look. Last one, consider the differential equation. The last one kind of seemed like a differential equation, right? We create a differential equation, a derivative, but here we're being given a differential equation. And a lot of times this is a problem where you might have to create a slope field or they might give you slope field done and you sketch a particular solution or maybe not. But the points break down here is six and three. It says find, the, find a solution, find a solution to the differential equation satisfying this. This is your initial condition. So that's six points. You guys should love these problems. I don't know. I think I love, love them just because I feel like they're easy and predictable and I don't have to like give reasons and justify and units and context of the problem, you know, at least on these. I mean, if I did, I, I could probably deal with it. But first thing you got to do is separate the variables. If you do not separate the variables, you're getting zero out of six points right here. So we got to separate the variables. Um, multiplication, division, get the, the y's on the left of the dy, get the uh, dx with the x's on the right, and that's worth a point. But if you don't do it, zero out of six. We're going to integrate both sides. The antiderivative of e to the two y's is e to the two y. But when you do the chain rule, take the derivative, check it, you're going to get an extra two. So we don't want the two, so we put an extra one half. You could do u substitution to get that. This is going to be three x cubed over three plus c. So you got a point. For this antiderivative, you get a point for this antiderivative, you get a point for writing plus c. If you don't write plus c, you lose the next three points. Let's find the c value now, which is going to give us another point. So 1 half e to the 2 times 1 half equals 0 cubed plus c. So c equals 1 half e to the first. So that's another point. So then we're going to plug it back in. 1 half e to the 2y equals x cubed plus 1 half e. And now we've got to solve for y and give the domain. And that's that's the last point, okay? Because we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 points. So I'd multiply both sides by 2. And then I would take the natural log of both sides. Um, and you can't, you can't break that up. You can't distribute natural logs. The, you can't break that up. Sorry, there's just no way. Then you would divide both sides by two. So you get one half natural log. Don't put absolute values on this. This is, this natural log didn't come from an antiderivative. Okay. Um, now, usually we would then state the domain, but on this one, part B, because this is older, they said find the domain and range of the function that you found on part A. But usually we would find the domain right now. So, but right now it's, it looks like it's on part B, but usually they're not going to say anything. Nowadays, they just don't say anything. They don't expect it. They used to not expect it. They used to not ask for it all the time, but the domain, there's multiple issues we got to look at. We just got to look at this. The domain of natural log is that the inside has to be positive. And so I'm not going to worry about the inequality because the, it, it's actually easier in these to find the domain of solution dif differential equation because it's a single open interval containing the initial condition. So you don't have to worry about inequalities and line checks. We can just go ahead and think of it as equal to zero. And so we're going to get the cube root of negative e over 2. Or you could bring the negative out in front. All right. Now that's a value that has to be considered in our domain. That's the only thing here. You also need to worry about the original differential equation. Say, is there anything that causes this to be indifferentiable? That's usually not an issue for domains of functions. But for domains of the solution of a differential equation, that has to be considered. Now, any x isn't going to cause a problem. Y's, though, if there's a y that causes a problem, it doesn't go on your, on your domain directly, but there's an x that would cause that problem. Now, is there any way that e to the 2y could be 0? No, 
e raised to any value is going to be a number other than zero. So this is the only point we need to worry about. And usually what I do is I say, okay, well, let's put this on, on like a number line and then say, well, where does our initial condition lie relative to this? Now, this is for sure a negative number. So zero, x equals zero, is definitely to the right. Otherwise, I might have tried to estimate what this was. But I think that's pretty clear. Now, I put this on our number line as a solid dot. Don't break it up here. This is just to identify which, which single open interval you're supposed to use. So <clears throat> the domain is negative cube root of e over 2, all inside the cube root, to positive infinity. Or you could write x is greater than negative cube root of e over 2. Um, the range, now this is something that you're usually not asked and, and you're not expected to give, but the range is what are the possible y values that you're going to get out of your graph. Now, this graph right here, it's a natural log graph, so it kind of looks like this. So that's something to consider. You're not going to get any values um, <clears throat> really different. You know, you're going to be plugging x's in, but positives and negatives uh you know it's gonna and this is gonna restrict it to where you only get positives but i think we're gonna get this we're gonna get all of these values the range is going to be negative infinity um to positive infinity or negative infinity to positive infinity like this so all reals um so that was just a little tricky, but testing your knowledge of these functions and how they work. There you go. Um, by the way, one point just for writing this down, one point for getting the domain, one point for the range. That was three points total right there. You guys should love differential equations. Nowadays, they usually start to get mixed in into kind of more like word problems, which those people off a little bit at first, but just realize you can often ignore all the words and just solve the differential equation, get the bulk of the points, and then you just got to maybe make sure you put units and maybe use it to answer a question about the word problem. All right. By the way, th these should have been 45 minutes. I just flew, th flew through three of these in 30 minutes. <clears throat>